All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss, and isn't it just beautiful today? My God, this fall weather, at least right now today, the sun is just like glistening on all the leaves and all the trees and all the fruits still on the trees. Man, it's just beautiful out here today. Um, call me a romantic, I guess. Uh, but today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about pruning fig trees. And I wanted to make this video probably for a long time. I and mean, we've done pruning videos, but I wanted to do this video justice. I wanted to have a very comprehensive view on fig tree pruning. Um, trying to include as many examples, we're gonna look at larger trees that are in the ground. Uh, we're gonna look at trees that are kind of out of control, some that are very small, some that are in containers of different ages, different sizes. We're gonna look at a lot of different cases. And I wanna give you guys the rules, really. Um, a lot of the rules of pruning can be applied to many other fruit trees. It's not just figs. This is, of course, a fig-specific video, but a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about could be applied to any fruit tree. And I think the, the main message of this video I wanna to make to you guys, really simply, is that if you wanna grow great fruit, one of the best things that you can do as a grower is to appropriate, appropriately properly uh, prune your fig tree. Prune that fruit tree the best that you can. Uh, it starts off with the right form and it starts off with the right pruning. And because both of those things really relate so um, heavily with the sunlight. And the sun is the main tree's source of energy, right? Photosynthesis. So if we can maximize photosynthesis on our trees, the more sugars our trees are gonna produce, the better quality our fruits are gonna be. Not only that, but we also need a certain level of intensity of sunlight and duration of sunlight to even set the fruits along the branches. And so if you don't get that, that sunlight as the trees are growing in the spring, you won't actually set the, the fruits. You won't get any fruits. And a lot of people have these big, beautiful trees and they send me pictures all the time and they're like, Ross, I have this big fig tree, it's been there forever, but it just never fruits. It just never puts out a fruit. Why is that? Well, if your tree is beautiful, healthy, and big, it's probably because you're either one of two things. You're pruning too much, or your tree is not getting enough light, and either the, the location the tree is in is not getting enough light, or what's most likely the case, you're pruning and the form of your tree is so bad, that the internal part of the tree or most of the tree is not getting the light that it needs actually to set those fruit buds. So the light does a lot of things. It, it's about the quality of our fruits, the quantity of our fruits. Uh, there's so many things, even the earliness of our fruits, there's so many factors that go into this. So if you really wanna be good at growing figs, you need a green thumb, but assuming you can maintain and have really healthy plants, the next best thing that I can teach you guys is about pruning. And so this is really, again, what separates the men from the boys, the really good growers, people who can produce really high quality pieces of fruit versus the people who can't. Um, so let's kind of look here. By the way, we'll start off with some of the rules really quickly here. And two of the things that you're gonna need for this video for any pruning job is gonna be a silky saw, this is just a hand saw. It's a nice brand called Silky. I actually bought this one in Japan when I visited. And then this is a Felco. You can get any number you want. I think this is a nine or a six. I don't remember. It's an eight, okay. <laughs> so you need pruning shears, you need hand shears, and you definitely need a saw. And so the saw is for bigger jobs. Uh, wood that the, the diameter that this, this hand pruner cannot handle. If it's too thick, it's too difficult to cut with hand pruners, you need to use a saw. And so the older the wood, the more I would recommend using a saw. Now, let's talk about really quickly, when do we prune? As you can see, all my trees still have leaves on them. We're not gonna prune just yet. You can, but there's still a lot of sap flow in here. I'm still getting ripe fruits. We still have length of our season left. I wanted to make this video before we actually get into dormancy uh, because this, this video is more timely for specific people. Uh, now rather than later. And so we don't wanna be doing this until the trees are dormant. And you'll know the trees are dormant when they get hit by a few frosts. So we need to see probably a hard frost, 
one to three hard, one to three freezes of some kind. We need to really see the uh, the leaves look really sad and crumpled, and they'll start to shrivel like any leaf would in in the fall. They'd fall off the tree, and uh, you know, turn to, you know, they start decomposing and stuff and become very crispy. So we need to see that on all the trees and on all the leaves on the tree. And so eventually the leaves will fall off and probably around for most of you guys around Christmas, maybe even Thanksgiving, uh, as early as Thanksgiving, uh, around Christmas time, maybe even into January, you would start thinking about pruning your fig trees. Uh, and that's for people obviously in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, the rules to pruning a fig tree, here's the, the fig specific rules beyond just uh, any old application of a fruit tree. So the first thing is the more we prune, the less fruit we're going to get next season. Now that's not always true, but as a general rule, that is true. Because if you guys can um, keep the apical buds, and I'll show you these buds on the tree. Oh, just lost our microphone. Test. So if you guys can keep these apical buds on the tree, you'll be way better off. And these apical buds you can find here at the tips. These are the tips of every branch. And so some of the trees may have a missing tip, but actually right below that missing tip is a lateral bud. And these lateral buds are typically high in energy. They have a lot of energy. They have a lot of uh, carbohydrates stored within them. And so the following season when the fig trees wake up, which is where the, the main crop forms, the new fruits will typically form for most of us. And that's the crop that we want. That's where the figs form. They form on the new growth. They don't form typically on last year's growth unless you're dealing with Brabas or a San Pedro fig like Desert King. But for most of us, we wanna keep all of these tips intact. Because the more of these tips we have and the more of these higher lateral buds that we have that have a lot of this carbohydrates stored within, the better time we're gonna have the following season. We're gonna have earlier fruits, higher quality fruits, and we're gonna have more fruits that way. So if you remove those buds, the trees will dramatically have a more difficult time fruiting the following season and producing the quantity of fruits that you want. So that's why, that's, you know, I didn't wanna just say, don't prune your tree, uh, but I wanted to give you guys all the reasons why for all the things I'm gonna say. And so pruning really should be kept to a minimum. Now, some of you guys have trees that are too big and they're in cold locations and you need to protect them. And so you can't wrap the tree every year if it's 10 feet tall. So you have to do some kind of pruning. And for those people, we're gonna give you guys some ideas, but as a general rule of thumb, pruning should be kept to making sure that the tree itself has enough light. And all of your cuts should revolve around light. It shouldn't revolve around controlling the size. If you're gonna control the size, we'll talk about that, but a lot of your cuts shouldn't be about taking a third off of the tree. That's the general rule for most fruit trees. That's a terrible idea. In fact, again, if we take a third off of every single branch, we're removing the buds that matter to us. We're removing the apical buds, we're removing the lateral buds. So instead of heading back a branch, which is very simply, if we were to look at this particular branch here, let's kind of zoom in on this for you guys as well. So if I wanted to take about a third of this branch off, well, maybe I would cut it down here as an example. And so that's just not a great idea. Like, again, we're removing the apical buds and the lateral buds, and by doing that, we're now actually delaying our harvest and having less of a harvest next year. So instead of heading this back, instead of pruning this by a third, I would just take the entire branch out. And so that would be called a heading cut, right? We would head back all of the branches to a lower height. But instead, we are focused on light. So if, as an example, I have a branch here, a branch right there, and then a branch that's pretty small behind it, maybe this one in the middle here is actually, I don't know, preventing the tree from getting the light that it needs. Um, 
Obviously this is not the case in this particular situation, but because this one here is in the center, it may be too close to the other branches. It may be impeding the light that the, the other branches are getting. So you would remove the one in the center. You would remove the one that's in the future. And that's what you have, you have to think about here. When we're making every cut, it's about light, right? But it's about what do you think your tree is gonna look like in the future? When I make this cut, the tree then the following year, what is this tree gonna look like? So is it gonna branch out in this direction? It's gonna branch out in this direction. It's gonna branch out in this direction. And so I'm trying to imagine actually next season what the tree is gonna look like. So I'm gonna to try to make my cuts now to make sure that next season there's a lot of room for everything to grow. And so nothing's crisscrossing, obviously nothing's dead. Everything has its own position, its own ability to get the light that it needs. Each individual branch has to get the right amount of light. If one branch doesn't get the right amount of light, that's a waste of space. And that, that branch won't fruit. So as an example here, this tree back here, I have one branch over here, although this tree is rather young. This one here doesn't have any fruit on it. Whereas the other two here that got the light that it needed do. So instead of, as I was getting to, heading back a branch, we want to make a thinning cut, it's called. So as an example, like I said, with these branches over here where there were the three of them, I would take the one out of the middle. And so that's going to, not only are we going to take out, let's say, a third of the branch, we're going to take out the entire branch, the entire section of that branch, so that the rest of the branches in that given area, and especially the following year when it branches out, wakes up from dormancy, it has the light that it needs. So those are the main rules here. I don't want to be heading anything back. I don't want to be cutting a, a third of the tree. Uh, I want to try to keep pruning to a minimum. And the only goal here in the winter time of pruning our figs is to keep it minimal and to make sure that we're getting enough light the following season. If you do that, you will succeed. You will have good fruit uh, no matter what. So let's look at some trees now some examples of figs that uh, are in the ground. Let's look at some in-ground figs. So this is a, a tree over here called Little Ruby. I still got the net on it. It's been in the ground for a while. It's a dwarf fig. And in fact, you don't really have to prune this fig because it doesn't grow much. There's actually a butterfly bush right behind it. And so it's kind of in this little corner here underneath the butterfly bush. But if I were to prune this at all, which I'm not gonna prune it, I'm not gonna touch it, um, but if I were, instead of cutting out some of these really small branches, these individual branches that you could consider our fruiting branches, this is where all the fruit formed this season. Instead of cutting out some of that, which may or may not be a little too, um, uh, a little too dense, um, if it is a little too dense, you could look at some of these branches, make a judgment call as I looked at that potted tree we just looked at, and you cut the one out of the middle, right? You cut the one that's going to impede that growth or impede that sunlight the following season. But if I was going to make any cut on this, it would be way down here at the trunk. And so I'll bring you guys in because this is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. This is where at a tree like this that's a bigger size you want to start first and you can see all the trunks down in there. So rather than just cutting out, you know, individual little branches and just heading everything back and, and literally just taking a chainsaw to a certain level and just leveling it out, why don't you just cut out some of the, the trunks? So if there's one trunk in particular, like let's say this one here is so close to this butterfly bush that, well, you know, maybe it's not getting the light that it needs or maybe you have a fruiting branch or a tree, let's say, that's really tall and you can't protect it in the wintertime. Maybe you can't harvest it. Maybe you just don't want to get on a ladder, right? So this tree here, Rondé Bardot, is like seven feet tall. So this branch here obviously is very tall, hard to protect. In the future next season, if this does indeed survive the winter, it'll be very hard to harvest because the tree at that point will be up in this area. It'll be like over 10 feet tall. So at some point I'm going to have an issue Obviously, I, I'm probably not going to have that issue here because it's so cold in the winter. But, you know, that's something to think about. And so if we're worried about the height of the, the fig itself, we're trying to contain the size. 
beyond just controlling the density here because the density is really important. And so this tree has already done a great job growing outwards and getting the light that it needs. But if I'm worried about the size, well then I'm gonna come here right in the center, just like I would that little ruby, right down here at the base, and I'm gonna prune out one of these trunks. You can see a nice little trunk down here. It's got a few years on it now. And so these younger ones here, like this is a one-year-old trunk. And so you can prune out very easily on these in-ground trees, something a bit older, which will remove a lot of this, this growth here. And it will remove this whole section so that now this, this younger trunk here that's coming up will eventually come up, take, out, take up that space that this was in Obviously not this particular branch, but let's say, let's say this one right here, actually, because it's right below all this growth. So we take this out, then this takes its place and does pretty much what this branch did this season, does it next year. So you would do something like a, a recycling process. You're really concerned with the height and the size of your trees. You need to figure out some way to recycle the wood and only really starts with coming down here at the base. It doesn't start with just taking a chainsaw and cutting off everything here at a certain height. That doesn't help. And in fact, you're hurting yourself because you're removing all these apical buds. So many people ask me about this every single year. And so I just have to you know, tell you guys, like this is so important. This is really one of the most important things you can do. Don't do that. <laughs> just make sure if you're really concerned with the height, Prune out the really tall branches and start from the base. Don't start from up here. Yeah, maybe if you had one shoot that was really tall and that was it, you could prune out that one shoot. But for the most part, our branches are, are made up of, of many shoots, not just one individual stem or single stem width. We have many branches coming out from every single branch. And so again, that's the key, that's the critical point here. Now the other part about getting a smaller fig tree is so like a branch like this that just formed, we wanna cut this off at a lower height um, to let it branch out. So if we're establishing a form like we would maybe in a container, is a really good way to, to uh, I think, demonstrate this. But you can do the same thing in the ground and that at a certain height, what you're gonna do is you're gonna prune off this main stem. And so I like to do this actually in uh, the summertime. So this is a form of summer pruning. Rather than pruning during the winter time, we're pruning during the summer. And it just really can be made very easily by pinching. And so we just remove the apical bud that we wanna keep typically for the following season. But if we're trying to set up the form which you can do in the growing season, you just remove this apical bud with your thumb. And then this will then encourage, of course, we did it down here. This is kind of where the area was of the scar that we did that. The tree then branched out actually into three different new branches. So we have one little one down here and then two over here. And so now we have a tree that's got a lower height because we didn't allow it to grow as a single stem whip, as a really tall tree, and then top it. We made sure that we came in here when it was smaller, and now that it is a bit smaller at that height, and now the scaffolds themselves, which is what these are here, are forming at this lower height. And the, the general rule for any fruit tree is really to prune it off at your knee. So you put your knee up against the, the trunk here, and then you cut it off right there at your knee. And in the, in the fig tree's case, you just prune it off with your thumb, you just pinch it. And then, of course, with additional food and water, if you do this in the summer, the tree will grow and put out these new fruiting branches uh, that may fruit for you, actually, later this, that season. But also, they're setting up the form, which is great. Now we have the form established on this particular tree. We've got the main trunk that comes up, and then we have it branching out into three or two uh, scaffolds. Typically, you want somewhere in the three or four range and so you can't always get what you want, but obviously that's critical. Now this tree actually has a second trunk. So it's not only the main trunk here, but we have this one over here. And so this has got a nice form to it. Next year, if we keep most of these uh, apical buds here and lateral buds, we'll have a lot of fruit that we're gonna be able to harvest off just this one tree. And so the same thing can be said 
with the in-ground trees is that if you're trying to keep them, keep them small, you want to make sure that you're pruning them at a lower height to set up those scaffolds. So as an example here, this is a really long shoot on my Rondé Bordeaux. This comes all the way down here from the base of the tree and just shoots up. See that, that stem right there? And then of course at about, actually about my waist or higher, maybe about four-ish feet, four and a half feet or three and a half feet, whatever it is, it then is now starting to branch out. And so now these branches you can see are much taller and these are the scaffolds. They would be the permanent scaffolds of a tree in a warm climate. Now, if you had a, obviously you lived in California, you lived in a zone eight, nine, 10, this is very easy to maintain a fig tree in the ground as a tree and not a, as a bush. And you don't have to go through this recycling process nearly as much. Instead of recycling stuff down here at the, the base, the soil level of recycling these trunks from the base, you would recycle these scaffolds. These scaffolds now are permanent. And so we wanna make sure also that we're positioning these scaffolds far away from each other. Now the tree has done its own thing. It's positioned all of its own branches because it's so dense. It has to cover such a wide area. It's positioned all of its branches accordingly to where it thinks it's gonna get the most light. And so that's not always the case. In fact, some trees, they grow in weird ways and you have to position the branches a little bit better to your own liking and to what would benefit the tree actually more. Um, so what you want on the scaffolds and what you want on these trunks, even from the base, because the trunks from the base, if it's a bush, is the same as the scaffolds. We can think of them the same exact way. They're permanent or you can recycle them and have others come in its place and they will become permanent. Those are the things controlling the size. So what we wanna see from either one is a scaffold or a permanent branch, a permanent trunk, that's rather long. I like to have longer scaffolds because the longer they are, the further out they go, the more light that they can reach. And typically we don't want our scaffolds just growing straight up in the air, right? If I'm a trunk, right, my body's a trunk, and then I have scaffolds coming up and my scaffolds are going straight up in the air like this, well, the angle of the sun is not gonna, it's not, I'm not gonna catch all of the sun because of the angle of my branches. If I put my arms out more like this on a wider horizontal angle, well, guess what? There's so much more light, you can see it's hitting my arm, it's hitting my jacket. But if I go like that, there's much more less light actually hitting my jacket. See the difference? So it's the same exact thing with these scaffolds. We want them a bit longer and we want them wider and we want to position them away from each other. These are very important things to set up with the form of our trees. As I said, determining what height you want the tree to be at. It starts off with just selecting the right trunk, topping it off at that particular height and then allowing the scaffolds to grow and then positioning the scaffolds, uh, forming the scaffolds, staking the, scaff the scaffolds so that they're away from each other, they're on the right angle, and then of course they're the right length. Now once they reach the right length, we can then start pruning off those particular tips. Or in fact, you probably don't even have to touch the scaffolds on this particular tree because it's just gonna branch out the following season anywhere there's light. And that's the fig tree's natural response, guys, is that the fig is gonna grow anywhere along the branch that there is light. You don't have to do anything. The tree already knows. The tree is like, oh wow, I got some light here. Well, maybe I'm getting this light. It's hitting my branch. Maybe I should put out a bud and start growing here so I can make use of this light and get some more energy. All the trees do that. So we don't really have to be pruning even when we're forming the trees. It's so simple actually. A lot of this stuff early on is about staking, topping the tree at the right height and staking those scaffolds, getting them to the right length and then positioning them correctly. And then we're done. From that point, all we do is just recycle some of the uh, fruiting branches. If you wanna remove some of those fruiting branches, you can just to make sure there's a little bit more light into the center of the trees. And then of course you recycle some of the scaffolds. It's, it's really that simple. Now, what if you had, let's say, cause we've already talked about a tree that's too big. We talked about the in-ground trees. We talked about trees that are more mature. Uh, we went over a lot of the principles, but what if you had a tree that was super, super young, very, very small, 
And so you're not even at this point yet, by the way. And so I want to do men I want to mention one other thing actually with this tree here that we looked at, where we said that we topped it at about a foot and a half, two feet, maybe even three feet in height to keep that tree a bit smaller, form those scaffolds lower. Well, these scaffolds I'm not gonna touch. You could see, like, look at the length of these scaffolds. They're not anywhere near two feet or three feet in length, you know. Um, this is only maybe six, seven, eight inches. So we gotta make sure that we're gonna continue on with this growth. So now I have like, here's another good example. This is a tree I grafted this season and just put the graft on down there. It grew as a single stem whip. At a certain height here, I did eventually top it and then it formed these two scaffolds. Now the scaffolds are on the wrong angle. So the following season, I'm gonna bend these scaffolds over and give this tree more uh, ability to gain more light. But these two scaffolds here are rather long in length. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. And if all I do is bend this over like that, get myself some stakes, the tree is now going to branch out all along this branch. And I'm going to have a really nice form going forward because I set up the scaffolds. I got them to the right length. And now they're getting the light that they need. And the tree is recognizing that light and it's going to grow and put out new branches in those particular locations. So again, what if I have a tree that's really small and so I'm trying to get this thing established. Here are some young trees I have in two gallon size pots and they're all of different shapes, all of different sizes. You can see some look, you know, a lot worse than others. A lot of this of course is about getting yourself a good rooting environment and rooting well and then having a really good green thumb because if you get a small fig tree like this, you gotta really take care of it a bit better than you do something a bit larger in these, these larger sizes. They're not as established. But the main objective here with these younger trees is to make sure first and foremost that they're healthy. Get them rooted out really well and make sure that they're healthy. And grow them, if you wanna grow them as a single stem whip, you wanna grow them as a tree, they're meant for a container, well then grow them out as a tree. If you wanna make sure that they're grown as a bush, well then you can let them bush out. But for the most part, this is our objective. We have a nice healthy base down there. It's grown as a single stem whip. It gets to that particular height that we want and then we top it. And so once we top it, and I'm not gonna do it now. In fact, I'm gonna wait until the spring. I'll remove this apical bud maybe before I put the tree away for the winter or maybe sometime in the spring to allow this tree then to branch out. Once it branches out, then I'm forming the, the permanent scaffolds, right? But what if our tree really isn't healthy? And so that could be the this, this situation here is that maybe we have some growth on our trees that's a bit heavily infected with the fig mosaic virus. And, and so pruning is not necessarily always limited to light. It's not always necessarily limited to, you know, forming the tree properly. Um, it, it can also be a, a way to actually rejuvenate your trees. And so I have some trees as an example that I rejuvenation prune. I've been rejuvenation pruning them every single year in that these are my in-ground trees, guys. All along here, this is the garden in the center, but I have probably, I don't know, 60 fig trees in here along the house and then coming this way, all planted in the ground. And so when you plant fig trees in the ground and you prune them back every year really hard, they love to put out really nice, healthy growth. And that's because the natural response of any fruit tree, these are my cherry trees, it doesn't matter what it is. If you heavily prune a tree in the wintertime, the tree's natural response is to grow and grow and grow and not fruit. So if we're gonna be pruning and trying to make our trees healthier, we have to be pruning our tree typically in the off season during dormancy, because that's gonna encourage our tree. So what we wanna do with something that's not healthy, and I have a couple trees down here. These are two trees here I've been really in particular keeping my eye on. I've been trying to give them compost tea, I've been trying to improve the soil. And so I've been keeping my eye on them and I've been watching them. And I know for a fact that the root systems of these trees are not very strong. I know for a fact that the growth is not very healthy. I can tell by looking at the leaves, I can tell by looking at the wood. So what we need to do with these trees is actually prune them. 
And so the difference is rather than pruning, as I said, the opposite, don't prune your trees. If you want to get fruit and you want to get high quality fruit, we want to do the opposite now. We want to actually heavily prune the trees. And this is going to encourage them to grow. It's going to encourage them to put out healthy growth. And especially if we do a harder prune where we actually cut them way back. And so this past season in particular, I lost all these trees in here, got pruned by the cold. It's just too cold this winter. Uh, these trees, you know, I'm in too cold of a place. And also, by the way, you know, the soil is just too much, has too much moisture in it. And then the figs, they don't lignify up in time. And you can see the branches here. There's still a bit of green there on the wood. So this is never really gonna be, I think, a great place for fig trees to survive the winter, or at least this particular plot. And so they all got killed back to the base. And every year I've been purposely actually pruning them back to the base. And so when you do something like that, you actually are doing a form of rejuvenation pruning. You are bringing them way back you're cutting them way back, and they're then responding the following season by putting out all this really healthy growth that has typically no fig mosaic virus. The tree roots itself out really well, it grows really well, but the bad thing is they don't fruit very much. So you may want to do this actually with your very young trees that are not healthy. And so I like to get almost all of the young trees, even in the containers here, they're only six inches in length or they only have such a small amount of growth, I will prune them all the way back to a lower height to encourage them to actually fruit a lot, or at least grow, excuse me, grow the following season. So that's mainly the, the keys there uh, with that. And then of course, the last thing I wanna touch on here, guys, is what if you have a tree like these that are out of control? Because these trees, I'm telling you, they just grow and grow and grow. And so this is exactly what you don't want to do if you, get, if you got fruit or you want fruit, right? A lot of these branches here, I get to sell them as cuttings. So the more they grow, it's in a sense, the better it is for me. But I want fruit. And so I would rather not actually prune them like this. Um, I would rather save some of the branches so that they can grow and they can fruit. And so a lot of my pruning this year on particular branches is gonna be kept to the very minimum. And so I can very easily bend some of these branches down, cover them, protect them. There's so many methods of winter protection so that I don't have to prune them or that the winter doesn't prune them because the winter is really doing the same thing as our pruning shears. We are losing growth in the winter time. Those hormones within the trees are changing. So if we can keep that to really exclusively in the summer, keep our pruning to a minimum in the winter time, I'm gonna see much better success with getting these in-ground trees over here to fruit. And so if you have a tree like this that just grows and grows and grows, the only thing you can really do to it is just hope that next season it survives the winter, maybe you protect it and you don't prune it. Because the only thing you can do at that point, uh, you can't do anything really in the season. I've tried pinching, of course you can pinch, which is, a form of summer pruning and summer pruning obviously is going to help but it's not going to be the end it's not going to be the end all be all you can only do so much with this so that's my recommendation there guys um, i just would highly highly recommend if you have an unruly tree that loves to grow you got to stop pruning it uh, it's the only way you got to get it more light the more light it gets uh, the more it'll fruit and the more the energy that the tree has is directed into those fruits rather than growing. And so you'll eventually slow the tree down. It'll get its act together. Uh, but if you got something like some of these back here, which are, you know, 14, 12 feet tall, as some of these trees are, you need a, a different system here. You need a different way, a different approach. You know, this tree over here, as an example, survived the winter. Look how much smaller this is than some of them over here that got killed by the winter cold, there's a difference of like seven or eight feet in height. And so that's just the dramatic difference of what can happen when you prune versus you don't prune. And so it's partly why, well, someone's gonna be like, well, Ross, you didn't do any pruning in this video. <laughs> it's like, well, most of my pruning is gonna be very minimal. And so that's the objective here, guys. Um, I thank everybody here for watching. We will see you soon. Please check out the blog. Hit that subscribe button. It's figboss.com. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You got something out of it. Let me know down in the comments. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.